Hello, internet. <laughs> Typically, fruits gain their smells from esters. However, there's always that one weird kid in class, and for the kingdom of fruits, it happens to be oranges. And by oranges, I mean citrus fruits in general. So that includes lemons, grapefruits, tangerines, and pine trees for some reason. And that's the stuff that I'll actually be making today. So, to obtain this stuff, it's actually pretty simple. What we need to start off with is a ton of oranges. Now, I'm actually using oranges for this. However, if you think about it, really any citrus fruit will work for this. I'm not using lemons because lemons are too sour and I'll fry the cuts on my hand. And I'm not using tangerines because the walls are too thin and it will be hard to shred. Um, I'm not using grapefruit, however, because I am not insane and I actually don't enjoy eating that stuff. Anyone who eats grapefruit, and ironically, is crazy. And now, three days after I filmed the intro, I mean, look at it, it hardly even fits in the bowl. There is over 600 grams of orange peels inside of this tower of organic matter. I am an actual ah. Uh. <laughs> so next, we're gonna get an orange peel and just start shredding off the outer layer of the skin. And... We're gonna do it by hand because it actually works better by hand. And we're gonna collect the outer layers of the skin. So this is a good shave here. And after we collect a little bit. And now that I've collected a little bit, you know what I'm gonna do to it? Nah, just kidding. Not on this YouTube channel. Now, are you insane? Of course we're not gonna snort orange peels. So yeah, just keep shredding orange peels. They're only most external layers. That's where most of the limonene is concentrated. Just keep shredding them until you've shredded your own tower. This may take a while. Now that all the orange flesh has been disintegrated, we can actually begin distilling this essential oil for the skin, that is, if you are a combustion engine. So, just get it and pour it inside of the flask. And so the flask is about, I'd say, halfway full. Now, for my next trick, I'm actually going to pour water inside of this structure. I'm going to pour water until there is filled, yeah, up until the water line is slightly over the orange line. Alright, so now that preparations are complete, I'll just light this thing up and I'll let the distillation process begin. So, here's a quick recap on how this works. Um, hot gases evaporate here and they travel through this pipe. And they want to flow out of this pipe as gas. However, this section is filled with cold water, which I pump from here into this larger exterior pipe. This turns the gases down in, into a liquid, allowing the gases to actually condense and drip out of here. And the water heats up, so I just pump it out of here into that Dr. Pepper can over there. And, um, yeah, just to dispose of the hot water. And that's pretty much it to the setup. Oh yeah, by the way, that copper grate must be there. Because otherwise, the glass from the flask and the glass from the oven, the stove, um, they come into contact, and one actually melts into the other, and this causes a direct heat transfer and cracks the flask. So yeah, I'll just pump some of the... It's leaking. So as I was saying, yeah, I'll just pump some of the water in, 
and let the water flow out, get this thing nice and cold for all the hot gases passing by. And in the meantime, I'll actually explain why we need the water. So while this thing is running and while it is collecting oil, let's actually go over the chemistry behind this. So what, how the chemistry behind this works, we have a flask and it has water and it has a bunch of particles inside of it. The particles, they're thin, but they have oil inside of them. So basically how it works, how it works. Each of the particles, it has um, limonene oils inside of it and limonene will just abbreviate it to LI. And if you don't like that, if you're going to say that's actually lithium, then I present to you guys, here's actinium for you. Now, as I was saying, because I'm too lazy to draw the limonene molecules out, essentially on the surface, we have a thin layer of limonene, which is floating up and limonene actually boils hotter than water. So this is making a lot less sense how it actually works. However, when water boils, everything gets excited and the external layer, it gets water inside of it, gets water molecules inside of it, and it gets limonene molecules inside of it, kind of in a mixture. However, because these two things hardly mixture, hardly mix, there is very low intermolecular bonding between limonene and water because limonene is just pure hydrogen and carbon. Now it's overheating. See that steam in there? Yeah. So as I was saying, because we have a layer of limonene and water trying to basically mix, this layer becomes incredibly unstable because there's no intermolecular bonding here. There's no hydrogen bonding. There is no oxygen bonding. There is nothing going on between these two. So it is incredibly easy to pick these particles off via heat, which is basically what we're doing. We're mixing the water and the oil particles inside of this flask over there. And then we're picking off the mixture layer, which I described right here. And this allows us to distill both water and the limonene oils at the same time. So we're going to continue distilling. And if you look closely into the... So, because about none of the first batch survived, besides a bit of murky orange liquid, I'm going to be redistilling all of this, another batch, right on camera. Now, if you look at the result, you can see there's a very clean oil layer. That is actually the limonene, which is getting distilled by the reaction, which I just explained beforehand. Oh, this is water, so don't get your hopes up. But this small layer, this is what we're after. And it goes without saying that for optimal results, you need to occasionally pick the flask up and shake. It goes without saying, <laughs> you need to pick this thing up occasionally and just shake it to increase the yield of the, to increase the limonene and water surface temperature inside of the flask. So at a point you'll notice the water level continues to go up, but the oil level is still the same. So basically what this means is that there's no more limonene instead of here to actually be distilled. So what do we do? And we wait for this to cool down and get ready to distill the next out of the following seven batches, I estimate. Uh, <laughs> Now that the distillation is done, we can actually look at the results. We can look inside of this to see there is a thin layer of oil right at the top. If we lean it a bit this way, it becomes a lot more visible. So how do we extract it? Typically what I found we do, what I found is best for it, we get a smaller flask for it. And we tilt the jar like this. Next we get an eyedropper or something and pierce this layer of oil and deposit the oil inside of the flask. And we just repeat this. So there is no more oil left inside of the source of extraction. And this is what I pulled from it. If you look closely, you can see there's a distinct 
two layers. The top one is the oil and the bottom is just the water which I pulled along with it. Now we're gonna clean this again, but we're gonna just still like three or four more batches before that. And now that we have an oil layer, I'll actually dispose of this stuff if you smell it. <coughs> Thanks. It doesn't hurt you like chlorine gas or anything, but it smells awful. It smells like boiled oranges. No, oh, wait, that makes sense. After just selling four batches, I got about this much lime in you, just this top layer. From 653 grams of oranges, I got approximately 2 milliliters. And you know what this concludes to? This conclude, This can be concluded to the fact that the disc later is absolutely garbage and that I'll need to upgrade. So yeah, guys, do tell me in the comments if you want to watch me actually make a better disc later. And that's it for this video. See you guys.